This is Dr. Todd Dixon. Get ready for another thought-provoking series entitled, Where Did That Come From? We're going to explore the Word of God to trace where all of the drama is coming from. Hold on to your seatbelts. Grab your iPads. Grab your iPhones. Grab your Bibles. Grab your pen. Grab your paper. Get ready for Where Did That Come From? As we go into the series, where did that come from? And we get ready to dive into the scriptures. And I truly want you to hold on to this series because we're going to spend time in the scriptures. We're going to dive into several scriptures. So you're going to have to take notes and follow and, and then get the next week's series and all. Because we, we got to trace down some things. We we got to apply life for 2020, going into 21. And we got to apply that to the word of God. The Bible lets us know that the word of God is truth. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is everlasting. The word of God will always bring life and hope. The word, the word, somebody say the word of God is where you go when you have a question. You see, the word of God, for those who believe and those who are seeking God in this hour, is your road map to heaven. But while you own your way to heaven, the word of God is your guidepost. The word of God is what's going to lead and guide you into the truth. Not our feelings, not our opinions, but the word of God. And then when you get into the word of God, you center it. Why do you center the word of God? I center it. It on God loves everybody. My God. The Bible says in John 3.16. What? For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Whosoever believe in Jesus. Shall not perish. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. So the word of God lets us know what? God is love. And, and the word of God lets you know another principle. God loves everybody. And the word of God lets you know another principle. It's not God's will that anyone will perish. So that puts you in check when you're looking at scriptures, when you're looking at the contents, when you look at what is said, how it's said. You understand, wait a minute now, let me center this. What would Jesus do? What did Jesus do? So what God so gave Jesus and Jesus what? Gave his life for all men, all women, all girls, all boys, every living human being, Jesus gave his life. My Lord, my Lord, so when you are judging, when you're measuring, when you're looking, you got to understand that that very person that you're pointing your finger at is somebody Jesus gave his life for. Center it on God loves everybody. I did not say God loves everybody's actions. I did not say God loves everything someone does. How oh, by God? See, we get it mixed up. We get it twisted. No, I say God loves every human being. Hmm. But Lord knows he detests some of the things we do. Won't somebody say, Lord, have mercy on us. <laughs> because if you haven't ever done it before in your life, walk very softly and walk very slowly. Because you may be the next one that falls into that temptation. But as we go on in life and as we go into this series, we ask ourselves, where did that come from? Huh? Where did that turbulence come from? Where, where did that north wind and that south wind come from and, and started this combustion of craziness and drama? Where, where, where did it come from? There's a shaking and a quaking in, in, like never before in the land. I think we can all agree on that. In these times of instability, we are experiencing relationship breakdowns, relationship breakups, relationship explosions. And the only thing you see is the debris of what used to be a very strong, loving relationship. And we find ourselves asking in disbelief, where did it come from? What, what, what happened? I, I just can't believe. After 35 years, after 40 years, after 25 years, or after... Five years ago, I used to be able to talk to my best friend. Now we, we don't even speak. Where did that come from? Where did it come from? Where did it come from? My husband just up and left. Just up and left. 
Where did that come from? My teenage daughter won't even talk to me. She doesn't even want to talk to me. We used to go shopping together. We, we used to spend time together. Now it's I don't even want to talk to my mother. My teenage son doesn't even want to talk to me. We used to go out. We would throw the basketball around, throw the football around. We had fun. We would go fishing together. Now he doesn't even want to talk to me or be around me. Where did that come from? Ah, oh my God. People all over the nation would go to church and say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, I love, love him. Oh, I love Jesus. Now, it's like I question. I question my relationship. I question my belief system. I question, is church even necessary? Where did that come from? Ah, oh my God. Let's go into the scriptures. Are you ready? Oh, I set you up. Somebody look at somebody and say, I'm on my journey. I'm on my journey. I, 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 I'm going to finish well. I'm on the journey. Where did that come from? We're going to start out with James 3, 13 through 18. And we're going into the New Living Translation. And as we go into that, I could just hear some senior citizens say, Dr. Ty, don't forget about us. We've never seen times like this. We've never been rejected like we've been rejected. We've never been dishonored like we've been dishonored. Where did that come from? Ah, I can remember the time they used to say miss. And they used to say ma'am. And they used to say thank you. And they used to say I'm sorry. But now it's like I'm dishonored as a senior citizen. They want to get rid of me, Dr. Ty. Where did that come from? My Lord, shake yourself. And say God is not through with me yet. Oh, put your hands in the air right now, my senior citizen, and say, God is not through with me yet. Oh, my God. He's got great things in store for you. Parents, he has great things of reconciliation come your way. Wife, husband, he's going to do a work that people going to say, I thought that marriage was crashed. And they, now they're like lovebirds. God is bringing restoration. But as we go through this turbulence, let's dig deep and find out where is all of this coming from. So as we look at James 3, 13 through 18, and I suppose to you, and we're reading out of the what? New Living Translation. Verse 13, if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. <laughs> oh, write down that first note, and we're going to take a lot of notes. <laughs> but write down the first note. Wisdom from God brings humility and good works. Oh, yes. Come on now. If you come up with an idea, you come up with a suggestion, you come up with a thought process, you come up with something that you go, now that's the way I should go. Look at the fruit of that decision and decide whether or not this is good works and did it come from God. Oh, yeah. Wisdom from God produces good works. Let's go to verse 14. Are you still with me? But if you are bitterly jealous, uh, somebody catch up with me, we're in James 3, 13 through 18, New Living Translation, verse 14. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Hmm. Write another note down there. Don't cover up the truth. True wisdom comes from God. True wisdom brings forth good words. Uh -huh. If there's boasting, if there's jealousy, if there's a selfish ambition, I just want to get my agenda across. I just want to get my point across. So I'm going to burn down your house. Oh, yes, I did say that. So I'm going to burn down your company. The Bible says, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Because good words... The wisdom that comes from God, ha, it brings forth good works. For jealousy and selfishness is not God's kind of wisdom. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Jealousy and selfishness is not God's kind of wisdom. Where did it come from? Oh, my Lord. 
Where did it come from? I'm talking to suffering people all over this world. Victims of somebody's jealousy. Victims of somebody else's selfishness. You be strong. God will restore. Oh, if he did it once. If he bless you once. He's going to do it again. He promised he would never leave you. Nor will he ever forsake you. Uh, so just know that you serve the almighty God. And yes, during this season, there have been loss of jobs. There have been breakups of families. Oh my God, there's been loss of businesses. There's been sicknesses and disease. But your God, my Lord, here's somebody. I want you to hear me. It's a mighty God. And he will restore. Let's keep going. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom on verse 15. I know it's tight, but it's the word. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Demonic, evil, source out of sin. For jealousy and self-righteousness is not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Know the difference. God is about good works. God is about love, joy, and peace. Yes, he is. And the opposite of that, the evil works of that, is confusion, hatred, malice, strife. We're not going to go to Galatians 5th chapter, but it does tell us the difference between the fruit of the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit and what comes out of the flesh. Oh, my God. Here we go. Write this down. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Something I want for myself. Oh my God. Don't care who it hurts. Don't care who I have to run over. Don't care who I have to run past. Don't care who I have to trip up. The Bible says you're going to find that disorder and evil of every kind.